I'm bored. Let's see what else I can try. What the hell? Oh god, they've taken over. Surely it can't be that bad to the point in which I gotta make a video on it, right? I'm in for a wild ride, aren't I? Now, if you looked at the thumbnail, which I'm almost certain you did, you're 100% expecting a lot of- Now what the hell is this? It's me if you And you would be right. I mean, hell, if Lanky Box is making videos on it, the entire series is in the domain of children at this point. Today we're reacting to the brand new Amazing Digital Circus Friday Night Funkin' Music video. But it goes a lot deeper than that. And later in this video, we'll talk about one of the weirdest game developers I've ever seen. For now, however, let's get into our first game. As I expected, this is just a lazy simulator running game with no reference to Digital Circus whatsoever. But hey, since you already have the attention of the toddlers, you might as well make the monetization extremely rampant. And hey, why not make the game insanely pay to win too? Now, what's interesting is that the day after I played this game, they changed the icon. This is a common tactic a lot of Roblox games use. Why risk one thumbnail not being attractive enough when you can have 15 and see what sticks? The problem with that is that it doesn't give your game enough identity. You want to look at a thumbnail and say this is Runstar. Attaching a popular character to your thumbnail isn't going to make your game stand out, it's just going to make it blend in with all of the other ones. Now, before we move on to the next trend I've seen, we're going to look at one more game with a popular character in their thumbnail. Obby But Your Rope is exactly what you would expect. Extremely bland visuals, clickbait arrows trying to guide you like you're a toddler, which is probably the demographic of this game. Lazy scripting, misalignments. There's also like no music whatsoever. They could have put in like, I don't know, a, a skibbity toilet song over it, and they didn't. It's, it's just completely silent the entire thing. In fact, the only mention of Skibbity Toilet is in the shop in which it probably just turns you into a UGC abomination. So by now you can probably guess how these games work. It's just stolen ideas with a popular character slapped on them to get the toddlers to play. There's either no representation of the characters in the thumbnail or extremely little. Now that we've went through that, I'd like to talk about a different kind of trend I've seen on Roblox, one that doesn't necessarily attach a popular character to it, but it still exists regardless. These. Games with nearly the same thumbnail with the same type of style, but were made by completely different studios. At least, that's what I thought on face value. The two studios who made these games were Picture Perfect and Pear Pre- Wait a minute. These two groups are owned by the same guy! Not only that, but both of these groups have the exact same icon. What the hell is going on? After checking this guy's groups, I realized... This guy owned tons of them! All of their groups also had the same three assistant members. These are probably just this guy's friends trying to work out how much they can exploit toddlers. Now, the interesting thing is that this guy had a Discord server. Now, what I found in said Discord server was quite interesting. This guy uses one server for everything. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd understand why you'd want to do that. I mean, you drop the facade for people who aren't extremely young. Plus, it's leagues easier to manage one server instead of three. The games that I've seen that they've made were the first two teamwork games they've mentioned and some weird AI-generated thumbnail roleplay game. I'm not gonna check out that one, but I will check out the other two. The Discord server in question was pretty basic, it just had channels for all the games, nothing too interesting that I could find in it. They did have a Find a Teammate channel, which was completely empty. Now, let's start out with the former of these two games.
as you would expect, this is just another team up with someone, get through the game together, yada yada yada. Nothing we hadn't seen before, it's just another game trying to capitalize off it. Of course, there was monetization everywhere, and it had a premium payout farm place. Had a premium room egg that for some reason didn't work. This is just a pretty generic game, all in all, really. However, I lied to you. Because I used footage from BOTH games for that segment. That's right, these games use the same framework for both of them. I've seen game developers copy off others for profit, but to copy off yourself and make the exact same game except you can just carry people? This guy is on a whole nother level. And it's working! This guy has millions of group members! If this is what the future of Roblox looks like, I am not looking forward to it. The last awful trend I'll take a look at today are the ones based off of Barry's Prison Run. The original game in question being a first-person obby with really subpar horror elements. The first of two we're going to look at today is... Well, this game certainly is something. You know it's good when you're being advertised a bootleg skibbity toilet right out the gate. Yeah, you're being bombarded with frequent pop-ups asking to buy things, but still. This is not a very good game either way. Also, why is the game trying to copy Garten of Banban of all things? Another thing, oh my god, why is this door not tweened? I hate this. With a pop-up every time you die, yeah, it's a pretty generic obby game. Not really that much else to say, so let's just move on to our final thing. <laughs> Welcome to Boreo's Prison Breakout. The first person game that tries to sell you morphs every two seconds. I mean, at least this time there aren't pop-ups appearing every death that try and get you to buy something. I too love having a Balon sword in obbies. But with all that being said, this whole thing, it just proves my point. These soulless cash grabs are overshadowing games that actually have time and effort put into them. It's becoming more and more apparent that the only way to break a profit on Roblox is to lose all of your dignity. But there are still games that do it right. There are still experiences you can play to have a fun time. So after all of that, are trends really ruining Roblox? I don't really think so. I mean, it has the potential to if tons of people do it, but right now, it's just harmless. We're not the demographic for these games. Developers can choose what they want to do, and if they want to appeal to toddlers, they can appeal to toddlers. These concepts can be executed in the right way. It's just up to the people who actually want things to be their passion projects to actually work on it. Are the games we talked about today bad? Yes, of course they're bad. By our standards. To the standards of six-year-olds, they're perfect. We look at everything from our childhood as good, and in a few years, people will look back on these games fondly. We weren't immune to this either. The torch is just being passed down. But on that note, I think that's a good place to end things off for today. With that being said, I'll see you all next- My favorite game is Obby, but you're